Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be talking again about that upcoming Polar Vortex. It is already kind of underway, but we're gonna talk about how that's going to progress and grow over the coming weeks. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also highly recommend that you First off, check out that very exciting Patreon page where we just made a post about our next upcoming major winter storm that's going to be in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Also, our channel membership, you can check that out by clicking the button that says join and it's right next to the subscribe button. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, how long do you think that this cold pattern is going to last? Do you think it's going to last for most of February? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. First things first, we're taking a look at around, well, this morning, very early this morning, a little bit earlier than even I'm making this audio, uh, but we're working with kind of the uh, 6Z model run here from the GFS. And as you can see, we already have that very potent cold air in place, the purples, the blues, that's indicating anywhere from about 15 to 40 degrees below normal. Um, so very, very significant, and you're probably feeling it already for a lot of those upper Midwest regions. By the time we reach the morning hours of tomorrow, uh, we will know who won the Super Bowl. Also, comment down below who you think is going to win the Super Bowl. Give us some predictions uh, in the comments down below. Uh, that would be cool to check out and have discussions about that. That's going to be later today. I cannot wait, uh, but this is by about tomorrow morning at maybe about 7 a.m., depending on where you're at. And as you can see, it kind of spreads out. We can see the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic is going to be quite cold for the day tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be one of the colder days uh, that is upcoming. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to move on towards Tuesday and we're just going to take it day by day by day uh, and watch how this progresses. Now, this is by about Tuesday morning, like I said before, and look at the southeast. Uh, this didn't look to be the case a couple days ago when we talked about the polar vortex, but now it's becoming apparent that that southeast ridge could play a big role uh, in this event, especially for the Southeast. And that's kind of what we've been predicting as we made our winter forecasts months and months ago. Uh, you noticed that we were talking about that Southeast Ridge being possible, the Southeast Ridge being possible. Well, to this point, it hasn't really happened. I'll be the first to admit that. That Southeast Ridge hasn't really been as big of a factor as we thought. Uh, but this is kind of the pattern we're heading into is the closest to what I was calling for in my winter forecast that we've had so far this winter. The Southeast Ridge uh, the very potent cold air in the north central United States. Uh, it's looking like finally that pattern that we foresaw is finally coming into play uh, at this point. Let's take this to the morning hours or sorry, the afternoon hours of Wednesday. And as you can see, again, that southeast ridge is still battling that colder air. That very potent cold air actually recedes kind of back towards Montana, Wyoming, mostly in the Dakotas as well. Again, those purples is where we're taking a look at about 30 to 45 uh, degrees below normal there. So for Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, and even in through Kansas, a pretty potent cold air to say the least. Even the blues and the greens are very potent, but that purple magenta shade, that is where it's super potent there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take this a bit further towards Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, where actually this very potent cold down is going to slowly make its way further south and further east uh, as we move on. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment. So you can tell by this point on Thursday afternoon, February 11th, this is only a few days from now, uh, that this is becoming a more potent. You see those bright pinks? That's where we're at about 45 degrees below normal, and that's becoming more and more and more uh, widespread there. The southeast, again, still dealing with those slightly warmer than normal days, probably 50s uh, being indicated from what I could tell uh, throughout the week next week. As you can see, by the time we take a look at Friday afternoon, that just moves more over the central United States. You can see the north central and down through even Texas and Oklahoma. We're dealing with those purples. This is a very widespread Arctic outbreak, and you can just tell it's going to last so long. That's the incredible thing here. Uh, it's going to really drive, I, I really think, how we look at February once it's all said and done. It's really going to be determined by this polar vortex uh, that really looks to shove some Arctic air uh, down into the United States. Let's take a look at Saturday afternoon, and as you can see, it actually becomes a little bit brighter here, I can tell, uh, for a lot of these regions where they're just closer to that 36 to 45 degrees below normal. Somewhere in there, there's 49 degrees below normal Fahrenheit, so yeah, almost 50 degrees below normal. Let's say your average temperature is 50, you would be at zero degrees. So that is very extreme uh, cold air, obviously. Let's take this towards Sunday 
afternoon. And as you can see, it just moves further south and further east. Again, those very bright pinks for Illinois, Missouri, Iowa, Minnesota, Oklahoma, Colorado, New Mexico, and Texas. All of these regions dealing with a very, very potent cold air. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to move on towards Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so kind of crossing into the middle portion of the month and even beyond. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. All right, now, as you can see, we're taking a look at about Monday afternoon here, and again, Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma is where that heart of the coldest uh, temperatures are compared to normal. The southeast ridge is pretty much diminished by this point, um, so it's going to last quite a while, but it's not going to last forever. It doesn't appear at this point, although this is pretty far into the pattern. I mean, by the time we're taking a look, um, I mean, in five days from now, this could kind of look a little bit different, and we could have that southeast ridge still uh, fighting that battle against the polar vortex, but it seems like it'll only last uh, maybe for the first five days of it or so. Let's move on towards Tuesday afternoon, and it's becoming apparent that by this point, the model wants to show that polar vortex becoming a little bit weaker, as you can see, just less of those brighter pinks, more in the magenta. And that's hard to even say weaker because it's still 28 to 40 degrees below normal, uh, but comparatively to those temperatures that were about 10 degrees colder than that, uh, it's looking a little less potent by this point. By the time we take a look at Wednesday afternoon, you can definitely, definitely tell by this point. Uh, that it is just far less potent. We're hardly even taking a look at the magentas, only about the blues at this point, but that still is going to be very cold compared to normal. It's still just going to be frigid. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this in five-day increments on both our GEFS model and our European Ensemble model. So both of those models, we're going to take a look at this in five-day increments just to see how, the, how they're both trending, how they're agreeing, things of that nature. All right, now here we are taking a look at the first five days here on our GFS and Samba model. As you can see, you can tell that we have the cold, or sorry, the warm air set up over the southwest and the southeast there. Uh, kind of that southeast ridge really playing a role in that first five days, which is the 7th through the 12th. Uh, let's move on towards the 12th through the 17th. And as you can see, that's when that southeast ridge becomes a little less involved with what's going on here. That polar vortex moves further down. We see more expansive uh, colder air with that and really just more areas being included in that very potent cold air which really the potent cold air I would say is those darker blues in through the magentas those greens are far below normal temperatures and those blues is kind of just where it's noticeable but not super potent it's just going to be some colder days but the greens the blues and magentas is definitely where it's going to be quite significant and I always talk about the deterioration of what an ensemble model is calling for and here's a great example of that by the time we're taking a look at the 18th through the 23rd, look at how less potent it looks. We see lighter blues, lighter oranges, none of that more extreme stuff going on. And that's because we're dealing with 30 different members here. Uh, and really, they're just all starting to disagree as you get further and further into the forecast. So this isn't necessarily going to look like this by the time we, we get here. It's just the ensemble model is becoming less and less capable of showing us what it actually thinks is going to happen. All right. Now let's take a look at that European Ensemble model here. And as you can see, again, the first five days, 7th through 12th, you can see the Southeast Ridge. Southwest is looking warm as well. And then mostly the North Central United States dealing with that potent cold air over the next five days. Let's move on to that next five-day increment. And as you can see, uh, the European Ensemble model actually is a little less um, on board with that diving down of the polar vortex. For the 12th through the 17th, you can definitely tell it doesn't really bring it down into Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, the southeast states like the GFS likes to do. So that's where you start to see some disagreement. The one thing that we are almost certainly sure of, like 99.9% .9 sure of, is that there will be very cold air that sets up over the sets up over the north central United States and the central plains, uh, even in through the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. But it's mostly the eastern seaboard there where we're starting to get really, um, it's like 50-50 because will it move over like the GFS model is saying or will it not really come in like the European model is saying? That's why I'm pretty much 50-50. We have big disagreement there. I'm going to need to update the polar vortex. I mean, really, I, I really am. Here's the 17th through the 22nd quickly on our European Ensemble model. And as you can see, uh, it does eventually start to bring that potent air a little bit further south. And you can tell that this model actually doesn't become as diluted. It doesn't, it doesn't get as averaged out as the GFS Ensemble model does. I don't know why that is, but 
Yeah, it's still calling for the very cold air there over the central United States. By the time we're reaching the middle to the kind of uh, uh, fourth quarter of the month of February. So this doesn't look to end anytime soon, that's for sure. Anyway, our confidence tab, we are a six out of six, obviously. This is going to happen and it's already ongoing. So there's no question about that. Uh, we're, we're, we're at a six out of six for sure with that. Uh, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how much snowfall do you think is the maximum anyone sees with that ongoing snowstorm? And Corey Raymond said eight inches. I think that's a great guess. Eight to 10 inches, I think is going to be the bullseye. And I do think that will be in southeastern Massachusetts. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons. Sebastian Tao, John Bembenek, James Wade, Dovi Niggle, Alan Balemo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Codalesa, Michael Buell, Terry Curtis, Capbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Alicia Davis, Mark J, Luke Vallego, Garys, and John Qualisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.